Thanks for tuning in, folks. You're watching Thunderstorm 2, a Smash Ultimate monthly hosted by Thunder Gaming. I'm Maui, co-hosting with... And we have an insane bracket for you guys. We're going to blitz right through. It's not going to be the longest. We have uh, Solomon Forte playing against Civilian, and we're just going to go right into it. Yeah, they are ready to go. Already had a button check. Just going to go into game one. We've got Pokemon Trainer versus Snake. Uh, actually, a really interesting matchup. I like this matchup a lot. Uh, it's played a lot of back home. Pokemon Trainer does really well in this matchup just because he has so many different options to deal with whatever uh, playstyle Snake decides to use. So uh, if the Snake wants to play Campion throw grenades, you can just switch to Ivysaur and do uh, Razor Leaf a lot, uh, kind of wall them out. Right, so you can kind of match the tempo that the Snake player yeah. wants to set, which kind of allows you to handle the neutral a little better. And we'll see just exactly how both, both players utilize their tools. Squirtle can also be really good in this matchup. Oh. If, uh, yeah, if the Snake wants to be a little more aggressive or doesn't quite know how to wall you out, Squirtle can just get in really quickly and deal a lot of burst damage. And then like we saw there, uh, just get the tag. Oh my he god! So he gets your burst on the side B. So did be an even game. the attack just reflected him, I suppose. Yeah, so uh, the side B, as long as you get hit with like, a strong enough move, it'll, you still won't take any damage, but you'll be sent the other way. So I Squirtle's oh. side B is really dangerous to do off stage. It's almost always better just not to do it or go high like Solomon just I didn't need to throw out the knee on that. All right. Anyway, Solomon Forte, he's matching civilian blow for blow, but at the same time, I mean, he's kind of like he's losing a bit now in percentage. Yeah, I, I feel like Solomon has been controlling the pace of the match, which is definitely not what you want to see if you're a Snake player. As Snake, you want them to be playing your game most mm -hmm. of the time. So uh, the, the trades are kind of strange and in no one's favor at the moment. Kind of just taking blows back and forth. This stock will be pretty important, though. Whoever takes this is going to be in a pretty good position to win game one. Yeah, they'll, they'll have a lot of momentum, at least for the rest of the game. Yeah. Granted, they don't lose their stock too early. And that was a great setup at the ledge. Yeah, double grenade. Not much that uh, Solomon could have done to get through there. Civilian so just needs one up tilt here. Uh, Charizard is full hopping a lot too, so Civilian so might be able to hunt for the up tilt. Right. Oh, we were just talking about spot dodge into tilt. You hate to see it, but it's just a mechanic of the game. It's so good. And now Civilian is in a great spot as long as he doesn't lose his stock. He can just hang back, take trades, you know, slowly rack on the damage with grenades and maybe Nikitas. Yeah, Solomon is really pushing in right now to try to find a kill. Uh oh. Yeah, he's already on his last stock. It's not a good look. I mean, I, I love civilians, like, uh, sh grenade shield set setups. And, like, Solomon's not respecting that. He, like, he'll challenge it all the time. Wow, up yeah, smash the up tilt. Quick up tilt. As soon as uh, civilian got the lead, he just ran away with that game. Solomon's got a strong start, but uh, kind of technically SDing with the side B. And then uh, civilian able to get that second stock was really the turning point. Absolutely. And uh, we have an interesting switch to Battlefield as a counter pick. Now, I actually don't see. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought he was going to switch. Nope, yeah. Same matchup. same matchup. Wow. Honestly, I really. Do you really see this helping that much for the matchup? Um, honestly, I don't know. I don't know uh, what stage you would really want to go to. I don't think the stage much matters in this uh, matchup. You just don't want to go to like Smashville as Snake because right. you want to have the room to get away and, and use grenades. Absolutely. Um, the only thing here is that Pokemon Trainer will live slightly longer, and the way that Pokemon Trainer is looking to kill in this matchup is like pretty early with down airs and up airs off stage. Not oh, off stage. So, I see. So you don't have to worry about the snake living longer. Like This situation is perfect for you. Wow! Oh my god! <laughs> that down view was so good, and he's still considering the edge guard. Wow, yeah, we, we, got, we got these insane C4 recoveries. Oh my god, what a well-timed air dodge. And actually, I don't agree with Solomon's air dodge back to stage. He could have applied a pressure with the back air, maybe, right, yeah. punishing the air dodge, because he had forced it with the vine, which is great. That was amazing uh, resilience there from Civilian, though, being able to get back through all that. Grenading himself so that he wouldn't get down air. It's so easy for Ivysaur to get down air on Snake's up B, so that recovery was insane. If he can get even like a couple more trades in this situation, yeah, like that, uh, any, any little chip damage will help him before he loses his stock. Solomon's oh. just looking for a grab or up smash or tilt with kill. Switches back to Squirtle. Squirtle, I, I, I mean, he's not at that high of a percent, but he needs to end this stock very quickly. And I do I do appreciate Solomon's uh, jab lock setups with Squirtle. He, he had shown us a couple, like at least one of those in the game before. Yeah. 
definitely uh, won't work at this high percent. Right. Though, but, oh. The water gun can be appreciated though. Yeah, he read the air dodge and uh, had the right idea there, but just reacted a little bit too late to it, I think. He does manage to get it with a back throw though, so it's all in a good spot. He needs a grab here. He can get a lot of damage. So this should be it. Oh my god, this is where Squirtle really shines, folks. Ooh, he manages to oh fight. my god, no. A really, really, really bad option there. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Solomon's just using side B of Squirtle a little too much. It's, it, it's, Creates the illusion of being this really amazing move because you don't take damage in it and it has a little bit of armor, but doing it off stage is just so risky. Right. I love how you said that actually because you know it, it has the illusion of being a really good move. Right. It's so aptly said there. It, it, it's even fooled me many times in, in, in the in like in the brackets right. that I've been in. Once you learn how to deal with it, though, it becomes really bad. Like it becomes a really bad option if your opponent knows how to deal with it. And I'm honestly, civilian showing a lot of prowess using the Nikita to, to reflect it off stage to where uh, Solomon can't recover. Oh, and that's gonna be Solomon's first stock. Yep. Uh, civilian kind of putting himself back in this game. And let's see how he kind of brings the, the game back in his favor. This is um, basically exactly how the first game went so far. Civilian, like I said, I mean, Snake can rack up so much damage slowly over time. And if uh, Solomon gets kind of greedy for kills here, then uh, civilian can use that to his advantage to, to really make the comeback. Well, I like the get up attack, uh, forcing him, to, forcing civilian to respect. It's a really nice up air there uh, on Solomon's part, reading the jump off the platform. Since you can't shield drop anymore, if someone's shielding on a platform, the really only option is to jump eventually. So if you can read the jump timing, you just kind of overshoot your up air. Ooh. Yeah, overshooting is quite a great technique to catch your opponents who are trying to flee without really picking two defensive options. God, that trade actually worked out in Solomon's favor. He got a triple up air uh, guaranteed <laughs> just because of that grenade. Yeah, and you know, honestly, like the thing about the grenade is sometimes it works out in a snake player's favor to break out of strings, yeah. and sometimes it really doesn't. It's kind of a gamble. Like At this point, you're, you're a stock down, so you kind of have to mash your grenades to try to get enough damage to take this KO. So that makes sense on civilian's part. This and down air should be relatively easy. Yeah, oh. Solomon's gonna get it and tie it up on one. Yeah, and the way like the way Ivysaur's fall speed Pokemon is allows him to float even off a short hop just enough to catch that right. cipher. Wow. Honestly, even though they nerfed the size of the down air, it's still you know still a good move. It's still a great move. Oh the, the, yeah, the down air. So the size itself actually wasn't nerfed. It was just the the strong hit. The, oh, the nerfed. strong hit. Yeah, okay. so you can still hit the weak spot just as easily, and that's Pokemon enough to trainer. keep pressuring your opponent down. But uh, wow. yeah, the, the, the stronger hit's definitely a little smaller. They have to be a little closer to your bulb now. That has to be a little more accurate. All right, All right. game three. And they're going to FD. I mean, I, I'm not surprised. They're just for clean and simple, no platforms. All right. FD can actually be a little tricky for uh, Snake to deal with here, just because if Solomon switches to Ivysaur and Razor Leaf camps, it's like Snake has a lot of grenade setups and things, but he doesn't actually have like a nice horizontal projectile other than a Keto, which is pretty reactable if you're not recovering. Right. And right now, oh my god. It, I, I like the way Solomon's opting to use Squirtle's water gun to push mm -hmm. back a lot of civilians' setups, like with grenades. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that could have been really bad. turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Just attacking your grenade, a live grenade. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. But look at that. I mean, civilians has literally hit him three times with two grenades and a back air, and it's pretty much an even game. Uh oh. He wow. the shield at the exact wrong time and gets hit there. <laughs> The perfectly worst time. Oh my oh, god. Almost so air dodged scary. right into that. Really good avoidance there from Solomon. And yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It's so easy to get Snake. Like, if he goes high, use up B. If he goes low, use down air. There's so many things that Ivysaur can do to, to really nullify this character off stage. Yeah, it's, it's great to chase Snake if you know the matchup well enough. Oh my god, what a well spaced yeah. up tilt. He walked out of get up attack range. Yeah. Like, that seems so intentional. So wow. much lag on get up attack is invincible, but if it doesn't work out, you're in a pretty big spot to get punished. So again, though, the early damage from uh, Solomon has just been so solid. Yeah, the ledge is a prime place to bait your opponent, honestly. Again, the Pokemon trainer can deal with snakes up B so easily. That time he went high enough to where he uh, escapes, but he needs to make up this percent with grenade trades. Yeah, and, up, and uphill 90% to make up. Ooh. It's still climbing, 109. Snake. Forward smash. This is rough. Air dodges back to the ledge at an angle where uh, Solomon couldn't get the down tilt, so that was really important. Ooh, and he tried to land aggressively with a fair, which I can slightly agree with if it's spaced correctly. Yeah. Oh, he falls the air dodge, that's so scary. Civilian struggling to land Solomon. Oh my god, both players F smashing at the right time, but Solomon's coming out obviously just a hair earlier. Solomon just needs a back throw here to take this stock. He can look for a razor leaf into up air. There's so many things the civilian has to avoid right now. 
And Solomon's sitting pretty. 34% is not anywhere near like a death. What is this man doing? This guy is not dude. Oh my god! Who stands on a live grenade and a live landmine and just No, 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 no. I have to watch that later. That was just the silliest thing I've ever seen. Wow, that was ballsy. I love it. I could break shield so easy. And now it's an even game. I mean, 24% is so easy for Snake to make up. I can't say whether I'm impressed because I was so anti-meta and civilian didn't react in time with the C4. Civilian could have ran up and hit it with anything and it would have broken shield. Yeah, he, he had every setup possible in the book there. All right, Civilian and Solomon at their last stock. This is for game three, folks. Oh my god. Game three, pretty much even percent. 20% doesn't really make a difference in this matchup. Solomon looking to get him off stage for an early down air up B confirm. Uh -oh. Just looking to chip on a little bit more damage before things will start killing. This is such a bad Jesus. spot. Jesus. That is not okay. the vine whip you want to get hit by. He manages to land safely, but he's in the corner against a raised relief wall, which is really rough. A B. Oh, that's the angle. Yeah. That's good DI from uh, Civilian. Uh, DIing right above Ivysaur is where it becomes really hard for him to get that. Because you have to up B, hold back without B reversing. Right. A B oh, that's going to be it. it. Solomon yeah. takes it 2-1 over Civilian. Really good set. He's going to go on. I like I, I like how you noted how hard it is for Ivysaurs to connect their Vine Whips when your opponent's right above yeah, you. Yeah, when you're directly above, it becomes really, really difficult because you have to jump up B and then not buffer it to turn around. You have to like up B and then hold back in time. It's like really, right. really weird. It's a very precise movement like really of, of the stick. Yeah. So, yeah, so. So that's a really good first set to have. Yeah, no, it was quite it was quite harrowing towards the end, yeah. and I, I really enjoyed the excitement. Honestly, I love I love last hit games. I like close sets. Yeah, those are just so so spectacular to watch. And so yeah, thanks again for tuning in, folks. You were watching Smash Thunder uh, Thunderstorm Two, Smash Ultimate Monthly by Thunder Gaming, and yeah. yeah, we're you know we're getting into the swing of things. We just had our first set of the bracket, and you know it's it's moving it's moving along quite nicely. So yeah. Honestly, like, I, although I see Pokemon Trainer on stream a lot, I'm not the biggest fan of seeing Pokemon really? Trainer. Really? Yeah, honestly, I think it's just because, like, Razor Leaf is a very good setup tool for Ivysaur to get pretty much everything it needs. That's fair. Yeah, and I, it, I definitely like watching Squirtle and Charizard more than Ivysaur. Yes. There's, like, burst moments where Ivysaur is really fun to watch, but I really love Squirtle combos, and I really love, like, seeing Charizard actually be a character now that he got buffed. Absolutely, those buffs helped. And those buffs are also taking us along to break. We're going to be right back at it, folks, so don't go anywhere.